What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to add a background box behind content in Squarespace 7.1. So I'm here in my Squarespace 7.1 site and I have my text against my background image in this section, but I wanted to make it stand out a little bit more and put this content inside of a box. And that way the text is really legible, but we can still have the image in the background. So if I right click on my content, I need to find a container that houses all of the content in this section that I can add a background color to. And so if I hover over the content in this section, we have the larger section container here. Uh, and so each section on the page uh, gets one of these section uh, and then class page section containers. Um, so every single section on the page has that same HTML structure. So we have the outermost container. Inside of that, we then have the section background and we have the content wrapper. And then inside of the content wrapper, we have this content class. And this is a really good candidate for doing exactly what we wanna do because this is the element that the width gets applied to when we change the width in the section editor. So right now the width is set to 70% and you can see that all of the content in this section is inside of this container here. So what we can do is we can target this one section using its data section ID and then target this class inside of it. And we can add a background color to it. We can add some padding to it. We can style it however we want. So the first thing we'll do is we'll copy the data section ID for this section. You target data attributes in CSS by opening some brackets. So I'm pasting that data section ID between brackets. And then inside of that section, uh, we are targeting the content class and you target classes with a period in CSS. And so now we are in this one section, we're targeting that content class. And so what I can do now is go ahead and add a background color. So for my background, I'm just gonna make it black for now because we'll have a lot of contrast between the background color and the text. The next thing I wanna do is give a little bit of padding. So I'm gonna add padding of three viewport width units. And that means I'm adding padding equal to 3% of whatever the width of the screen is. So on bigger screen sizes, it's gonna be a little bit more padding. On smaller screen sizes, uh, it's gonna be less padding. So that's a way of making it responsive. We're not you know, locking in the padding with a fixed pixel value. Uh, it's, it's determined by the, the width of the screen. So we have some padding on it now. Another thing I could do is add a border. So instead of doing a solid background color, uh, I might wanna do just a border. So I'll go border, one pixel, solid, and we'll do white for that one. Um, and let's even, let's go two pixels. Um, so that's kinda cool too. It doesn't really help us with the contrast aspect of this, but it is just a nice design. Uh, and we could increase the background overlay color on this section to get a little bit more contrast. Uh, so we'll increase that overlay opacity. And now we have the white box around the content. That looks really cool as well. And let's go ahead here. I'm going to edit the page again. Uh, and the cool thing is because we chose that, that element that gets the width on it, if we adjust the width, we can adjust the width of the box and also therefore the width of the content in the box. So that's really cool right there. One property that I did forget to mention that we need to add is a box sizing of border box. So I'm gonna write box sizing border box. And this just includes the padding in the width calculation. So if I get rid of that, you'll see it gets a little bit wider. And when I add the box sizing of border box, it's including that three viewport width units calculation as part of the 70% width of the element. So you can add a bunch of different uh, styles to this. So we've already looked at border color and background color. You could do a semi-transparent background color by instead of just doing a hex value here, you could do an RGBA value where the RGB is the red, green, and blue channel. So I'll put that to zero so it's black with the fourth value being the transparency or opacity. So now we have a black color, but it's only 40% opaque. So that's a way that you could add a little bit more contrast, but it's not a fully solid color. 
So we have the background color, the border color. Oh, we could even add a border radius as well. So here's a border radius and we can do like 25 pixels. So now we get some rounded edges there. And this box is looking much too big for my preference. So I'll just bring it down a little bit. Uh, and then another thing you could do is you could add a box shadow. So I wouldn't recommend adding all of these at once, but I'm just showing you all of the different things that you can do so that you can kind of pick and choose and style it how you like it. So for the box shadow property, uh, we can do 10 pixels, 10 pixels. So the first value is the offset on the X axis. The second value is the offset on the Y axis. Then we have the blur amount, so we can go 30 pixels and then we need a color. So we'll just make it, uh, let's reuse our RGBA color because we don't want a fully like opaque shadow. We want it to be a little bit transparent. So once I lock that in there, you can now see the shadow uh, and it's, it's as if the light source is over here and it's uh, casting the light down this way. Because we set up this offset that shifts it to the right 10 pixels and shifts it down 10 pixels, but maybe you don't want it shifted to the right. Like maybe you just want more of a drop shadow on the bottom. So we'll set that X axis offset to zero and now it's just shifted down. Uh, on the Y axis. So the box shadow, that's the best way to add shadows to elements. So this is kind of a cool look here on this box. And I'm just gonna change this to solid black uh, and you get something like that. So it's a really cool method for adding a box behind your content because it plays so well with the section editor. So you can totally change the size of your box and it also affects the alignment as well. So the box will move with the content. If you want the content over to the left or over to the right, the box uh, just moves because we've been very strategic about the element that we're adding this styling to. All right, that is it for this video. If you think you're gonna use it on a site, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next one.